Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I help you become a better artist. And I just want to say, Happy New Year. Hopefully 2024 is going to be a new chapter where you guys acquire new skills, learn new things, and uh, just level up your artistic journey. All right, <clears throat> without further ado, we are getting into ballpoint pen sketching. I have not covered that yet at all on my channel. Now, the sketch that I have here was drawn just by your trusty Bic ballpoint. It's black. I think I got this at CVS. <laughs> you can pick these up at CVS, Walgreens. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you can click the link in my bio, the Amazon link. I do get commission, and I, I believe I have uh, some package of Bic pens listed there. So there's this lovely gnarly creature from another dimension. And then you will probably recognize this. This is the dragon serpent dude, or female, I don't know what it is, on my YouTube channel banner. So there's that. So I'll probably be shifting back and forth showing you how I loosen things up. But let's get into ballpoint pen sketching. I love sketching with pen because when it is down, it is down. There is no eraser. That's part of the, I guess, charm to it and also the intimidation factor. Now, a question that I get asked over and over and over again, and I, I feel like I need to answer this now. How do I draw without having the ink leak out of the pen and make blotchy marks? I will get into that. A good way to test it, especially if it's a brand new pen, take the cap off, and just dot the side of the page like this. Get all that excess ink out that might be sitting up there in the knob. Okay? After you do that, then we can start sketching. Now, your pen is going to be held and treated just like a pencil. The only difference is there's no lead, so it's a lot shorter. Okay, so here's what I would do. You notice all the, the looseness. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add some detail on this arm. Now, I'm not pushing hard. I'm using my pinky, and I'm resting the pinky on the paper. Okay, so my palm on my hand, on my, on my right hand, is touching the paper, but it's very, very loose. Okay, so with ink, like, you know, just sketching with ballpoint, you don't have to worry about smearing graphite as much. But what I'm doing is I'm, I'm lightly holding my pencil like this. Now everybody holds, or I'm sorry, I'm holding my pen differently, but it's light. Everybody holds it differently. I like taking the pointer finger and the middle finger and then, you know, your index or the ring finger and then your thumb. And I like drawing with just those, keeping my pinky loose. And sometimes I'll even let go. Now it's a little bit more important to do this with a pen because like I said, if you push too hard with a pencil, you can at least fade it off. It's a little bit more difficult with a pen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cover this uh, shoulder, okay, very, very lightly like this. So you'll, you'll start to see these hatch marks go over top of each other. Now, in my other lessons, when I shade, you know, I start with one direction and I go all the way up and I cover the area, you're gonna wanna do the same thing with a pen, but you're gonna be a little bit more methodical about it because the pen, the ink, does not fill in the gaps in between each stroke like graphite can, okay, because it's not as thick and it doesn't spread. There's no powder to it or anything. So what I like doing is I like holding my pen right above this black part. Okay, so there's, it depends on what Bic pen you have, but I like resting it right above there. And I actually have a callus from drawing this way for like 39 years, <laughs> long time, but I, it, it's there, it's permanently there. That's where my pen rests. So then I grip it like this lightly, and then I just go back and forth. Now, the, the fun thing about drawing with a pen is that when you try to shift the pen to the side to get that nice flat part you would on a pencil, it's impossible because that's metal. Well, to whatever, the aluminum, I guess. Whatever they make the pen tip out of. So when you dip it to the side, you're going to get lighter strokes, but it's going to be much, much less than you would with graphite. So very, very lightly, you're going to start to see some nice tone cover over that. And guess what, folks? We're going to treat this just like I do with my pencil drawings. Okay, I'm going to wrap this around here, and I'm going to switch direction. 
And just like with graphite, I'm going to go a minimum of three different directions. Now, if you're interested in what type of strokes that I'm doing, I'll do it out here so you can see. It's not, it is back and forth like this, but I'm actually lifting the pen off of the page some and I'm doing this quickly, like this. It's almost like hair marks, but when I go down and back up, it's kind of like a swooping motion. So like, imagine uh, uh, like a pendulum, okay? Just going back and forth, almost like you're doing hair but I'm keeping it really close. So when I do it fast, you're gonna to start to see that, that area being filled up. It's kind of like hair. Actually, that's how you would draw hair. <laughs> I'm gonna be getting into hair uh, probably in the next video too. But all I'm doing now is I'm going back over those original strokes, keeping the pencil tip very close and very light. So notice how my pencil, I keep calling this dang thing a pencil. Keep holding the pen to the side. Notice how I'm not drawing like this. If you draw like this, that means precision. If you draw like this, that means sketching. Always remember that. All right, there we go. Because then when I want to get in there and precise, I'll just tip the pen up and I'll be like, ooh, look at the veins and cracks in the skin and all the imperfections and all that fun stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here. Now, uh, I'm going to treat this the same way I do with pencil in that I'm gonna take advantage of the tone of the paper. So those of you that are brand new to my channel, you have never seen me draw before. I like using moleskin. Draw with whatever paper you have. I don't care if you draw on the back of an envelope, it's fine. Strathmore, Kansan, all of that. It's good stuff, you can definitely use it. Okay, so the light source, you notice on top of the creature's peck right here, I haven't put nearly as much detail as I have the core shadow running right under there. So you got the nipple, you got the bottom of the pec here, and then you have you know your deltoid muscles, and then you have your abdomen. Okay, so over here, the light is going to be slightly less strong. Okay, so this, the spec highlight, I guess you can call it. The highlight's up here. So you are going to get a highlight right in this area because that's part of the shoulder where it's the, I guess, the northernmost part of the shoulder, northern as an up. Okay, so that means that the, the side of the pec right here is going to get little circular motions very, very lightly with a pen. Okay, so you're going to, again, the technique to draw with a pen is slightly different. So little circular motions, and you're going to run it across that pec. Okay, so you notice how underneath the core shadow, there's that slight light line right here. That's because there's bounce light, okay? There's bounce light, there's ambient light, everything is reflecting back up onto the creature's secondary shoulder. So here is the highlight. And if I want to make the highlight stronger, I don't add white or anything to this. I just make the core shadow darker. Okay, you got to make them play with each other. So for example, I'll just make this a little darker with little circles. Okay, and now it's it, the highlights a little stronger. Okay, so the next technique that I want to show is when you have a darkened core shadow. So, so look, let's look at the core shadows for a minute. Okay. We have the one on there and look at the oblique muscles on the side. Okay. We have a big core shadow running down there because there's the lat right here. So that's completely in shadow. There's part of the oblique coming down. You can see the core shadow there on each individual oblique muscle. You see that core shadow underneath. All that is, is layering with a pen. Now, how did I actually get that layering? I started off with this, this motion right here, and I covered the whole thing. So that original tone of pen that I put across there is the absolute darkest that area will ever be. That's the discipline of drawing with a pen. You have to plan a little bit ahead because I don't have, I mean, yes, they do have erasers that can take away ink, but who wants to do that? You're not learning properly unless you learn what not to do. Then you don't have to use the eraser. So with that said, let's put slight core shadow on the other side here, and I'm going to do some longer strokes like this. So all I'm doing is I'm starting off with a little bit of pressure, and I'm just moving upwards. So notice how many times I'm going back over that area. 
but it's not getting darker. I don't want it to get darker. I want the gaps to be filled in so that it looks like smooth ink. Like that. Now, over here, you're going to see this harsh line. Maybe I want to fade that line into the lighter tone a little bit. You're going to do the same thing. However, you're going to follow the, uh, the length of the shadow right on the edge, and you're going to release pressure as you move up the shoulder. You're going to go back down. So in, in essence, it looks like this. So let's say this is the shadow. I'm going up, and I'm going back down, and I'm going back up. And I'm going back down. Now, if you were to look at my sketchbook flat, this is what my hand looks like. So, so here's the paper underneath. Look at the angle that I'm holding. It's 45 degrees. Sometimes you can go even to like 20 degrees. Okay. If you learn how to control your pen with the, le the least amount of degree, then you're probably going to have smoother lines. So now what I can do is I can just kind of go over that area with little marks like this. It's going to take a little bit more patience than it would with the pencil because, like I said before, the gaps are not filled in the same way with ballpoint pen as they are with pencil. You can't smudge. You can't. The powder from the graphite does not break apart and fill in the little grooves of the paper, okay? like microscopic grooves we're talking about. So here... I'm going to start to put in some darkness where the deltoid split is. Okay, so you got like the long head, there's the deltoid split into three different areas. Now, this is a completely made up arm, obviously. This is like a, a humanoid demonic shape. Nothing looks human here, but it kind of does. So I'm using our shoulder muscles as reference. Okay, so that's like the main deltoid region right there. And then. What I'm going to do, since there's a bending of the flesh and everything, I'm going to put some darker lines above everything else so you can see where the skin would be folding because the arm is moving back. So those little subtle details, that's what's going to make your your creatures look really good with just those little areas. Okay. Now, once we get down in here to like the tricep area and then the bicep, as you can see, this creature has no bicep at all on the second arm. So I might put just a little bit of lump in there. Also notice how I, I knew to darken it. That's because I want to give the illusion that the light source is above and whatever is underneath will get a darker treatment. Okay, next up, I'm going to do some small lines and I'm just going to move all the way up the arm. So if you wondered what I just did there, it's this back and forth in a small, small area. So if you want it slow, it's literally this, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. When you go fast enough, you tend to do little circles. So you see those, oh, it's kind of like a slinky. So if you can do the slinky effect with a pen and you do it in different directions without pushing hard, you're gonna get some really smooth treatment. So let me move over here to our, our trusty little serpent. I did that throughout all of that jaw right here. It's just over and over and over again with little marks, okay, like that. And then I turned, little marks, little marks like this. And I was very subtle about it. And then all of a sudden it just built up to what I wanted. All right, so let's move over to our, our demon. Um, okay, so down here on the arm and the tricep slash bicep region, now this is going to be subtle, so I, I'm I'm gripping my pen just slightly harder because I want to control this little area. It's harder to control with a ballpoint in smaller areas when you want something subtle to draw to be drawn. So all I'm doing, and my pinky's still there. What I'm doing is doing little circles. Now sometimes when you draw, and this is actually what I prefer with a pen, you hardly see anything that you put down. That's good. That means that you're actually learning how to control it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn my sketchbook this way. So you can see that. I'm going to do this in another direction, not pushing harder. It's just like a pencil, folks. So not pushing harder. 
Okay, so this one's more like hair marks, if you want a larger version of it. I'm just pushing like this really, really quickly. And I'm just going back and forth. Now, I've been doing this a very, very long time. I don't even think of it. Okay, so, so the motor skills and the, you know, the hand-eye coordination and, and the control of the utensil that you're drawing with, the tool, that's going to come. So don't worry about that. If you feel frustrated, like you can't hold it correctly or it's not moving correctly, it just takes time. So now I'm just going over this area. So now look how smooth that looks. It's like a really nice black slash blue finish. Well, actually the blue is coming in. There's a blue sky. I'm sitting right next to my window. So that's why you see this like bluish sheen that comes over my pictures. Um, you know, I, I am going to upgrade my studio very, very, very soon. I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. So then after that, Next up, I want to show more of the deltoid muscle. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap that deltoid muscle, or the, the, sorry, the core shadow right around there. And then I'm going to continue that down here. Cause you know, within a bicep and a tricep, the deltoid tend, the, the ligament stops in between both of those. Okay, again, this is humanoid, but it's not human. So we're gonna take some aspects of what we have for a shoulder and we're going to make some striations there. And there's also going to be some kind of gross loose skin that's going to fold right down there. Now notice how, how darker that I put it. The reason I'm staying zoomed out now so you can see the entire picture. If you want me to zoom in just so you can see what I did, I will zoom in just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So hopefully that helps. So you can see it's actually a lot more loose now that you zoom in. And then when you zoom out, everything suddenly coming into frame. Okay, so now what I can do is I'm just going to put a little bit more tone across there. You are going to get a sweet spot whenever you draw with a pen. Um, if you look at the tip here, so you can see like the blackened part at the very, very tip, that's where the ink is coming out. And then you have I don't know if they make this out of brass or whatever they make this out of. Those of you that like work in a factory with the make pens, please tell me. That silverish part, I'm pushing more on that part than I am the actual tip or the ink comes out of. So I just tilt the pen to the side and it helps me control it. I can hear more paper than anything else. And I'm just doing big ovals again. You can see that. Now, look how messy that is. This is where patience comes in. So I'm just going to turn it like that, and I'm gonna hit it at a different angle, but very, very subtle. Now I'm really controlling. My pinky is really, I'm, I'm actually flexing my pinky muscles. And I'm just doing tiny little ovals. So look what I did there, right under the brachialis muscle. Okay, right under the, all that, like where the ulna is. I'm gonna darken up just a little bit so I can have more of an edge to the arm. Okay, and especially in here where the crease is, I can put some real black in there and maybe some folded skin like that. Maybe I want to show more of that tricep coming down, the tendon. Okay, so let's zoom out now so you can actually see everything as a whole. Okay, let's go over here. Oops, tilted my camera there. Okay, there we go. All right. Um... Oh, wait, is that not right? There we go. <laughs> you can see it. Okay, so that's like drawing with pen 101. And hopefully you learned some of the lessons with it. The thing is, if you guys struggle with drawing with a pen, please know that you layer it just like you would with a pencil. You just have to hold it a little, a little different, okay, and be a little bit more methodical. And I just want you to know that the more you tilt this to the side, the better the drawing is going to look. You just have to layer. I would say with every five layers that you give pencil shading, you're going to do another five minimum with a pen just so you can fill in these gaps. Okay. And remember, do not jump into detail if uh, – oh, there we go. So do not jump into detail until you get that nice coating down. All right. So – Thanks again. If you found this helpful, like and subscribe and comment below too. I love reading your guys' comments about how like your art is being helped and 
you know, it just motivates me to make more videos. I got a ton of lessons that I want to give. Uh, I'll be posting another video this week. So see you around, folks.